The birth of a Symmetriad comes like a sudden eruption. The gleaming sheath of the ocean heaves upwards to form a vast ball that reflects sky, sun, clouds, and the entire horizon in a medley of changing, variegated images. Diffracted light creates a kaleidoscopic play of color. The effects of light on a symmetriad are especially striking during the blue day and the red sunset. The planet appears to be giving birth to a twin that increases in volume from one moment to the next. The immense flaming globe has scarcely reached its maximum expansion above the ocean when it bursts at the summit and cracks vertically the membranous arches soaring into the sky now fold inwards and merge to produce a thick set trunk enclosing a scene of teeming activity. At the center of the trunk, which was explored for the first time by the 70 men Hamalai expedition, a process of polycrystallization on a giant scale erects an axis commonly referred to as the backbone, a term which I consider ill-chosen. The mind-bending architecture of this central pillar is held in place by vertical shafts of a gelatinous, almost liquid consistency, constantly gushing upwards out of white crevasses. Meanwhile, the entire trunk is surrounded by a belt of snow foam seething with great bubbles of gas, and the whole process is accompanied by a perpetual dull roar of sound. From the center towards the periphery, powerful buttresses spin out and are coated with streams of ductile matter rising out of the ocean depths. Simultaneously, the gelatinous gazers are converted into mobile columns that proceed to extrude tendrils that reach out in clusters towards points rigorously predetermined by the overall dynamics of the entire structure. They call to mind the gills of an embryo, except that they are revolving at fantastic speed and ooze trickles of pinkish blood and a dark green secretion. When the geysers of oceanic matter have solidified into pillars or into three-dimensional networks of galleries and passages, and the membranes are set into an inextricable pattern of stories, panels, and vaults, the symmetry justifies its name for the entire structure is divided into two segments, each mirroring the center of the most infinitesimal detail. Any number of attempts have been made to transpose <clears throat> and to illustrate the symmetriad, and a variance demonstration was particularly well received. Let us imagine he said, an edifice dating from the great days of Babylon, but built of some living, sensitive substance with the capacity to evolve. The architectonics of this edifice pass through a series of phases, and we see it adopt the forms of a Greek, then of a Roman building.
The columns grow narrow. The columns become narrow. The columns branch. The columns sprout. Columns sprout like branches and become narrower, the roof grows lighter, rises, curves, the arches turn into steep parabolas and take on an arrow shape the Gothic has born, comes into maturity and gives way in time to new forms. Austerity of line gives way to a riot of exploding lines and shapes, and the Baroque runs wild. If the progression continues, and successive mutations are to be seen as stages in the life of an evolving organism, we finally arrive at the architecture of the space age and perhaps too at some understanding of the symmetriad. Unfortunately, no matter how this demonstration may be expanded and improved, there have been attempts to visualize it with the aid of models and films. The comparison remains superficial. The human mind is only capable of absorbing a few things at a time. We see what is happening in front of us in the here and now and cannot envisage simultaneously a series of processes, no matter how integrated and complementary. Our faculties of perception are consequently limited even as regards fairly simple phenomena. The fate of a single human being can be rich with significance, that of a few hundred less so but the history of thousands and millions of human beings does not mean anything in any adequate sense of the word. It does not mean anything at all. The Symmetriad is a million, a billion, rather, raised to the power of N. It is incomprehensible. We pass through vast halls each with the capacity of ten chronicer units, and creep like so many ants, clinging to the folds of living vaults and craning to watch the flight of soaring girders, opalescent in the glare of searchlights, and elastic domes which crisscross and balance each other unerringly, the perfection of a moment, since everything here passes and fades, the essence of this architecture is movement synchronized towards a precise objective. We observe a fraction of the process, like, like, like hearing the vibration of a single string in an orchestra of supergiants. We know, but cannot grasp, that above and below, beyond the limits of perception or imagination, thousands and millions of simultaneous transformations are at work, interlinked like a musical score by mathematical counterpoint. It has been described as a symphony in geometry, but we lack the ears to hear it.